So you have a twin brother. Yeah. Are you guys still close? Yes. I feel like, oh, I don't know. I, growing up, I feel like we were closer. And I feel like now as adults, we've actually been, we've been actively trying to work towards being closer again. Because I feel when we were 19 and 20, living together in Salt Lake City and both exploring ourselves, um, we kind of like drifted a lot mm -hmm. because when you're going, when you're trying to like, I don't know, like um, work through like who you are in that respect. And also when you've grown up in such like a secular kind of religious environment, it can be hard to, I don't know, it's just hard. It's yeah. like, there's a lot of processing you have to do. So like to also be someone's friend that you've been basically competing with all your life too at the same time, mm. it's, it's a lot. So I feel like recently, especially um, the past couple of years, um, we've had like talks I'm like, all right, we need to like actually actively try not to be annoying to each other. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like there's no point of ever, like either of us ever visiting. No, but do you guys <laughs> have, so I'm so fascinated by the idea of identical twins. And you know, there's been like tons of studies on right. like them being incredibly close and like almost like psychically connected. Mm -hmm. Do you have that experience? Um, I don't, I wouldn't even like call it psychically connected. It's just like, you just know each other so well that you mm -hmm. can just kind of guess. Yeah. Like, I know how my brother is, so I know I know how he'll respond to things. That's right. not being psychic. You just know that you grew up with that person since birth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Let's call it. You just know them super well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've had our moments, I guess, maybe. But I don't know. We just were always very competitive growing up. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like our parents' fault, just how we are. Yeah. We're just both very competitive people who like yeah. to do things well. Would you say like your personalities are pretty much exactly the same or is he a little different than you in some ways? I would say that we are, we can be very similar, but we are also very, very different. Mm, okay. So like, for instance, he is one of those people who's really good at remembering um, who's wronged him. Ah, and I am not. Grudges. Yeah, oh, he is the queen <laughs> of grudge holding. He is amazing at it. He'll have the time, the date, just full time stamp, um, the weather. Um, of like the day that you did something that he did not like. Uh huh. Um, but like for me, I forget. <laughs> That's I, good I will always, for I forget. Like if it's really bad, I'll probably like remember you did something, but I don't remember it, what it is. Really? <laughs> like, I just don't care. I mean, like I'll care in the moment, but like after a while, I'm like, why would I let that weigh me down? I think that's a really good quality to have. And a lot of people aren't like that. They it like carry the those. out of him that I'm like that. Really? <laughs> no, so that's, angry. <laughs> that's so like, because holding resent onto resentments is, mm. it's a prison for you, not mm -hmm. for the person. Like the person, they, don't give, care. they generally don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Like resentments <laughs> definitely like they poison you. Yeah. So I think that's a great quality. I already put enough poison in my body as it is to so like, <laughs> let's like mitigate as much as we can. <laughs> so did you, either one of you like realize your sexual orientation before the other one or was it like a mutual thing? Like, do you guys ever I'm like have a discussion about it or no. was it just kind of like you just knew and it like was, became a thing? Like, I think we both knew individually and probably also at the same time, but I, we just didn't talk about it. Hmm. But especially like while we were, when we were like younger, but also. Um, Did either one of you ever try to date women? Or no. were you just like. Well, in junior high school, we would have girlfriends, but it was more or less just to keep people off our backs. Mm, so like beards, right? Basically, yeah. <laughs> but I kissed them and shit, sure. <laughs> but you know, it's a playing house. And then is your, is your twin in like the entertainment industry in any form? Is he like, totally different he um i tried to drag him into porn with me but um he was like nah. i'm like all right fine so you two goes, would kill it uh, i know i i mean but it's also like anyway it's also awkward because i have shot yeah. siblings in a scene yeah and like because of compliance they like can't touch each other which is fine it's i wouldn't like, want to touch him anyway yeah but yeah it's like yeah yeah i can see Anyway, um, he does um, modeling and stuff like that. And he has another job, but he does. I don't know what else he does, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. We both grew up dancing. Okay. So we were very competitive with each other with that. And then um, he moved to New York and yeah, and I moved around myself. So you're a trained dancer. So tell us a little bit about your dancing career. Like how many years did you dance for? I danced from 12 years old to 21. And yeah. what kind of dancing we talking about? Talking like hip hop, jazz, hip hop. Jazz. Um, I was mostly um, I was mostly a competitive ballroom dancer. Really? Okay. 
Like what kind of like? I was primarily I loved uh, Latin ballroom. <gasps> oh, yeah. So hot. It was a good time. I loved it. But then eventually, I just um, what sucks about ballroom is that you typically need a dance partner. Yeah. And where I lived at that time, a lot of the girls that were available to dance with were all on the younger side. And some of them were newer too. And some of these girls, when they're new and they like get any kind of like notoriety or any kind of like success and they think they know everything all of a sudden. And so they stop listening. Huh. I know. So I just kind of just got burnt out. I was just sick of constantly putting all this time, effort and money into trying to make something work that wasn't going to work the way I wanted it to anymore. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better. <laughs> 